Remember I said that there's a bunch of types of marketplaces? These are the three types of marketplaces that exist out there, okay? The first one is called an open marketplace, and I'll cover what that is. Second is called a curated marketplace, and third is called a crafted marketplace. And I'll start off with the third one, because third one is the most controlled, okay? They're basically contracting the suppliers, meaning they have total control of which suppliers are part of that marketplace. So in case of Uber, when a driver or a car comes on board, it's their driver and car, meaning they've contracted with that supplier, okay? They have controlled pricing. They determine what a product or a service sells at. And you know what, a point, sorry. I'll, 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 I'll step back a second if you guys can just listen. It's not necessary for a product to have a marketplace. Services have just as big a market to have marketplace, okay? So Uber, which we're referring to here, is a services marketplace, right? It's not a product. It's a taxi service, okay? So remember that it's not just about products. It's also services, and I know that I go back to saying product, product, product all the time, but it's actually services as well, okay? Now, simple customer experience because it's controlled, prices are controlled, your supply is controlled, so it's obviously a simple experience, right? There's no, when you use an Uber app, you don't have to worry one driver will act this way and the other driver will act that way and one will ask you this and the other will ask you, no. It's a very standardized experience, okay? Service is guaranteed, there's a problem, you call them, say, look, I got a problem with one of your drivers and they make sure that you're taken care of, right? Platform as a service, so again, every driver is given a mobile phone, they're given an app, right? So they're given platform as a service, they'll use that as a customers, we also get an app, correct? And they're just linking using that platform as a service. Now, most of the people um, in India, in marketplace, especially products, fit in the middle one, which is curated, okay? What does curated mean? that they're actually going through some process to vet the suppliers. So suppliers are not openly invited in. They go through a vetting process, right? They verify some things about the supplier, about the goods, but the pricing is open. You can determine your own price. You can sell anything at whatever price you want. You may not get any sales, right? I may choose to sell this clicker for 10,000 rupees, but it doesn't mean it's gonna sell. So it's open pricing. Um, manage experience, right? With some photos, with user, user experience, with search. What they do is they give you guidelines. They tell you that the photos have to be this large. They have to be this background. Uh, your user experience should be this. So they basically give you guidelines, okay? Different from crafted, because crafted, there's no guidelines. They actually do it, and they tell you what it is, okay? And then trust and safety. Obviously, because they're controlling a lot of stuff, there's a lot more trust and safety with them than it is with the open, and we'll get to open in a second. Payments, shipping, insurance, guarantees are all taken care of by these curated marketplaces. Okay, so if you look at it, Paytm, Amazon, Snapdeal, Flipkart, all kind of fit in the curated, okay? Uh, Paytm, you see it's leaning towards open also, because they're just starting to become curated. Otherwise, it was completely open. And what open is, somebody like a Just Dial, a Food Panda, an eBay, okay? Where anybody can sell, there's no vetting. In eBay, if you want to go sell, you go register, you can sell, okay? There's not much vetting going on, okay? Prices are, again, wide open. You can do whatever you want to do with pricing. Um, service level is dependent on each seller. I may choose to give you 30 days money back, another seller may do 45 days, another may do no, no returns, right? It's all based on each seller in an open marketplace. And lastly, there are almost no guarantees, minimal guarantees, because it's an open marketplace. Uh, guys, we've been talking about three types of marketplaces, right? Uh, we talked about open, we talked about curated, we talked about crafted. Okay, let's ask Naveen. Naveen actually is at eBay, a uh, senior post at uh, eBay, uh, cross-border trade. And let's ask Naveen what his 
uh, view is on these different types of marketplaces. Naveen, in your own words, can you describe the difference between these different types of marketplaces? So there are you know, two kinds of marketplaces, what you saw, see today. So one kind of marketplace is where people call it as a managed marketplace, where a lot of marketplaces put a restrictions of as, or have an entry barrier in terms of in case you want to start uh, to sell on their site, uh, you need to have a certain uh, you know, process and you need to have an established business and, and there is you know, probably a business case, you need to submit and then they allow you. So that's kind of managed marketplace. The other marketplace, uh, which is like eBay, it's an open marketplace. It's not only open marketplace, but it's open globally. That means you can you know, register with eBay immediately. You can list your product not only on, on eBay India, but across eBay sites like eBay US, eBay UK. So eBay provides you a, a single platform to basically reach out the buyer globally. Thanks, Naveen. Guys, Naveen kind of divides them into two, right? He talks about open and he talks about managed. But in our case, when we talk about managed, there are two types. There's curated and there's crafted, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. But I think great insights. He's kind of put it in his words what the differences between the two are. Just, uh, we just should not follow. EBA and Jetal are the same marketplace, is it? No, so remember I told you, so marketplace can take very many different forms. Marketplace doesn't always have to transact. Just dial gives you listings, right? That's the whole concept, right? It's still a marketplace. India Mart, Trade India, all our... All B2B marketplaces. They're B2B marketplaces, yeah. Can you tell uh, how Amazon is partly curated and partly crafted? Like... I thought it was the same like... Yeah, Amazon is a global company. Globally, they have both models. They have a crafted model and a curated model. They have both models across the globe. Okay, so besides India, if you, if you look at UK, if you look at US, if you look at Japan or anywhere, you'll see that Amazon sells its own products as well. Okay? So like uh, Quicker maybe falling in the category of eBay? Quicker will be open. Open. And so Quicker, OLX, they're C2C, which is consumer to consumer. Right? They're lesser business to consumer. Okay? eBay also started off the same way as a C2C, but ultimately it now has a B2C component also, which is the business to consumer component. So, as customers, why do we want to buy on a marketplace? I th and it's important for us to know because if, as a business, we're going to list on a marketplace and we're going to try to sell on a marketplace, this is why a customer is going to come buy from an Amazon, a, sh a shop clues, or whatever. Right? The first and biggest reason um, is choice. Okay? The variety that they get on a marketplace. So if you launch your own online store, what's going to happen is you're going to have a limited number of products on it. Okay? But a customer just inherently wants to see variety. Unless you're that small set that know what you want and you just go online and buy it. Most customers are not like that. They need to see variety. They need more options. Can I see a different color? Right? I, I know I want red, but you know what? I'll think yellow with the kado. Right? That, that mentality doesn't go away. So marketplaces, and by the way, we're laughing that we think it's an Indian thing, but it's not. It's across the globe. That's why marketplaces are the most successful e-com players there are. Okay. So choice and variety. Second, detailed information. Very truthfully, um, this is one of the other big reasons why marketplaces do well. They force you to give more attributes about a product. They force you to put a better content on the product, right? Your better product description, better product name. And you know why? Because as customers, think about it. Koi aapko bole ki ye clicker hai, lo. But I don't know what the clicker does, right? I have not told you that this is a slide changer that works on a Mac, that works on a PC. It also has a laser pointer to it, and I can, do, I can play videos from it. Now, once you give me this information, I see value in buying this product. But you know what? Most retail businesses that go online don't understand this. They think everybody's like them. They know what this is, right? Doesn't happen that way. Marketplace is forced, and that's why huge advantage for a, for a buyer to go on a marketplace, they'll find everything about it. At times, I'm telling you, even when I'm buying a phone, 
on a marketplace, there's more information to buy that phone than anywhere else. So, I obviously, my first choice is to go look on a marketplace then. Correct? Yeah, no, Sorry? How can they afford? They force you. They don't afford themselves. They force the seller to put more information. So on a standardized product, just for your information, the way they work is when the first seller comes, that's the person <laughs> that's loaded with work because they have to give all the information. All the other sellers can simply come and just sell another product of the same kind. But the first one that lists is the one that has all the load. Okay, so, but it is, it's that way, okay? So if you want to be there, you pay for it. Thirdly, why do the people want to come buy on marketplaces? There's reviews. Because marketplaces are constantly working on getting your review. You buy something, you get an email in two or three days. How did you like this product? If you don't reply back, they'll send you to another 15 days. How did you like the product? Why? Because people want to see other people's opinion about the product or service. Correct? I don't think any of us would go out and uh, buy something without asking. So by the way, I don't know if I covered this stat. Uh, maybe I did. 90%, remember, are, uh, all purchases are socially influenced. Yes. If you keep this in mind, right? 90%. 90%. Not online. 90% online, offline, doesn't matter. All purchases in the world are socially influenced. So like, like I mentioned, I think before, it's a mouth, to mouth, in a way. mouth to mouth, I see it, I see somebody wearing it, somebody, I ask someone, what do you think about this? How do you like it? Should I buy that? How, how, many, how many times can any of you realistically tell me you go buy a product without asking someone's opinion? You don't, so that's why he's, you know, I said 90%, right? I got 45 people, I got two, great. I got my 10%, <laughs> right? but 90% will ask, and that's how it goes. So reviews are a very big thing because people want to know what others have to say about it, okay? Then price advantage, ha, huh. I think India works on this, <laughs> right? Who, which one of these marketplaces is gonna give me this for five rupees cheaper or 10 rupees cheaper or 100 rupees cheaper, right? It's an inherent thing, but you know, take out the funny part of it. Regardless of where you go in the world, marketplaces obviously offer the best price. Yeah. It's simple. They got 30 people selling the same product. If you want your product to sell, you will reduce the price, right? As customers, we always get the best deal. So as a, as a customer I am, I actually never check price outside of a marketplace. I just go buy it on the marketplace. Why should I waste my time? I know there's 15 other sellers on it. That's the best price I'm gonna be able to get. Why am I gonna waste my time trying to check three other sites? I don't. As a customer, I don't. So you had a question. So just an experience. I bought a Philips portable speaker offline for 1,000 mm -hmm. So later, I just was browsing through Amazon, okay? So the same speaker, I found it for 2,000 rupees, mm -hmm. and they were giving me some 60% uh, off, and they were selling it for 1,200 or 1,300, mm -hmm. just for an example. So what is it that they, uh, you know, uh, inflate the prices, and then they give discount, which is not even a real discount. So what is this so exactly? You know what? This is not the first time I've heard this. Um, I've heard this a lot, actually. Um, but remember, the, the whole concept is that because prices are controlled by sellers. To get sales, sellers will a lot of times do this, right? And this happens in an offline store also, right? They have a big board outside, you walk in, and if you've gone to that store before, you sometimes realize, okay, the price has been inflated, and now they're offering me a discount, which still gets me same price or a little bit lower or whatever. Same thing happens online. So I think the whole concept of retail hasn't changed. Uh, it's just moved from offline <laughs> onto <laughs> online. Uh, and so people will inflate, um, and then they'll offer a discount. So again, the marketplaces themselves are probably the least to do this, but um, it may happen. There's one other example, and I think uh, somebody making a point. Yes. I was having a question that can we uh, really uh, trust upon these uh, big marketplaces? The, the, are they selling the real older brands or not? If they're saying it's Philips, or if they're saying this, this is this, 
Is that it? Uh, yeah. Should be there or not? So what happens is, in a marketplace, again, because sellers are basically selling, they try to as much vet a seller as possible. They say they'll go check his uh, office. They'll go to make sure that there's the genuine products that they sell. Unfortunately, what happened initial days in India um, is that a lot of the sellers started shipping fake goods or second goods or whatever it is, right? Um, to make whatever extra money that they could make. Overall, what happens is, and you're realizing it's starting to happen across all marketplaces in India. In the West, it's been happening for years. The marketplaces will start to test a seller. They'll order, they'll get the product, and they'll make sure that the product is genuine. It is what it's stated to be. I'll give you an example. Um, like I said, I've been in jewelry and on Amazon and probably decent business on Amazon. That marketplace, what they do is they tell us what to write with that gemstone. Because in gemstones, by the way, for the ones that uh, don't know, almost every gemstone is treated in one way or another. OK, that's how it is. Okay, every single one. So if 99%, 1% that are not are very expensive. OK, so Amazon slowly has been asking us to put exact treatments with the name. Now, it obviously affects sales. But they do it across to every seller there is. So, so everybody's sales is impacted the same way. But when it comes to trusting these guys, I think over time in India also, they will develop all of these processes. They're already starting to do it. Okay? Um, if you heard in China, Alibaba, people were claiming that they're selling all kinds of seconds. And Alibaba has been just starting to kick people out, all the sellers out. So if you start selling non-genuine products, they will just kick you out. Okay? Amazon, um, even if you sell a genuine product um, and you just don't have the writing to state what it is exactly, they will give you some time. If you don't follow it, they'll kick you out. It doesn't matter. They don't care because they want the trust to build. Uh, Flipkart, Snapdeal, Shopclues, they're starting to do all these. So again, these things all will get solved over time. So again, like I said, um, I've seen this happen in the US the same way. Uh, initial days when Amazon was launched, you used to have all kinds of problems. Today, you don't worry. I'm, I'm telling you. And just like I told you how I shop. I don't look. I close my eyes and buy it. Because if it comes wrong, they're going to fix it. OK? And that's how they are. I'll give you one, one example, OK? Um, a year and a half ago, uh, I was in the US for a few days. And I ordered a, a, a sports shoes for my son. Okay? I was not getting them here, so I ordered it from Amazon. And again, I ordered it online. I don't order. I don't walk into a store. So I ordered it online. They gave me a date that it's going to be delivered that day. OK. So I said, my flight is next day. It's OK. That day comes, shoes don't come. I said, oh, shoot, I got a flight tomorrow. So I call Amazon, very angry that, uh, damn it, you, my, where's my shoes? Because I got a flight tomorrow. He says, sorry, sir, the seller has uh, delayed the shipment, and uh, you won't be getting the shoes. So I was very angry. I said, OK, cancel the order. So they said, sorry, sir, cancel the order. So I get on the plane the next day. I, you know, I told my wife, sorry, didn't get it, whatever. Um, get on the plane the next day. I get a little message from Amazon. The message says, sir, the shoe has been shipped to you. I said, what? I just canceled my order last night. So anyway. Uh, on the plane, I call Amazon quickly before flight's going to close and whatever. I said, what? I, I called last night and told the order to cancel the order. Sir, it's OK. You can keep the shoe for free. Oh. <laughs> said, OK. Yeah. And this is not one. I have other instances where they do this. So it was a seller's mistake. They didn't meet the timeline. So they basically told the seller, you're not going to get the money for it. And the customer is just going to get the shoe for free. But you know what? They have a loyal customer in me forever. Because yeah. I know that if something goes wrong, I can trust them. Right? And that is slowly developing. The discount war is going on. Hmm. What should be the uh, in online marketplaces? What should be the minimum EBITDA margin should be kept for a sustainability of the business? For in offline, there's some 15 to 20% EBITDA margin should be kept. 
for profitability and are going on. So, online marketplace. So, so online marketplace is, it's a, I mean, it's a decent, simple calculation. The only thing you're worrying about different from your offline is the commission you pay these guys, right? So as long as you factor that in, whatever you're keeping offline, just factor their 20, 22%, 30%, whatever they're charging you as commission, and you'll be okay. Okay. Um, very truthfully, I'm just helping out one entrepreneur on pricing, and you know, there's no way to determine this. Every product is different for him. Okay, they have such different margins on every product. I cannot tell you, because what's happening is if there's enough competition on the product, the pricing has to go down where your margins go down. Okay, and some products where there's not a lot of competition, the prices are high, and as such, margins are better. So it all depends on product, depends on what commission you're paying out. On. So. I think the fifth point we covered anyway, protection, refunds and return policies. We were talking about it, right? Marketplaces give you huge amount of trust by giving you better refund and return policies. And then lastly, they give you quick deliveries. Because they're forcing you. So as a seller, they tell you that if you don't meet your delivery dates, we're going to kick you out or we're going to penalize you. Still, you can't say what quick compared to offline. No, no. So this is not a comparison. Yes, you're right. This is not a comparison to offline. Okay. All it's saying is that it's a comparison to another online store, possibly. But Amazon has same day delivery. You have four hours delivery. Four hours. Yeah. You have four hours delivery. In the U.S., they're trying two hours. Ninety rupees extra in the U.K. Yeah. Ask me six hours delivery, no extra cost. Yeah. So they're all trying. They're they're all getting to that real time level. I don't think they're going to get to. So you saw Flipkart is starting to uh, partner with your local Kirana guy and all. Yeah. Because what they're saying is that to get you that 15 minute, half hour delivery, they're gonna partner with them so you do get that delivery. Okay, so, all right. Now, moving on. Most of us are wa wanting to be entrepreneurs or currently entrepreneurs or something, and we wanna sell on marketplaces. Here's some very basic things. Again, uh, not, not uh, very complicated. Why it makes sense to sell on a marketplace. First of all, and foremost, they give you a global reach. Amazon today does, allows you not to only just sell in India, but the same product can be sold in the US, in UK, et cetera. You can actually become an international uh, seller and sell across the globe, okay? Marketplaces allow you very quickly to have a global reach, okay? Second, very, very unique point. They allow you to realize the true value of a product. How do they do that? <coughs> Imagine there's a denim maker, right? He or she makes denims. And they sell it in their local market for 500 to maybe 800 rupees, right? Now, imagine that they're able to list on a marketplace and find buyers across the nation to pay maybe 1,500 for it. Because maybe nationwide, that's the average price, correct? So realization of true value actually happens through a marketplace. Because the other is, you're forgetting, if you just list the product and compare it to all your other competitors, you'll also f realize if your pricing is too low. Okay? And it's a reality, by the way. The, the, the denim example I didn't make up. <coughs> it's actually a real person. They asked to hike the price. They, were, they, they hiked their price because when they sell it locally, it's only 500 or 800 rupees, but when they went online, they realized that most average price point it was selling was 1,500. So why should they not sell at 1,500? Now, another example of this is art. Do you guys realize that art has no value? By intrinsic value, there's nothing. Right? So how does art get value? A regard of others. Exactly. How do you get that? You need a market. You need a bunch of buyers out there to say, I will buy so much. Right? Again, online marketplaces have given art a new life. Okay? A small guy sitting in a small place somewhere making some paintings today can sell it across the globe at 100x of what he used to sell before. Okay? So realization of true value. Okay? The word is true because that's what the value is. The other advantage on selling on marketplace, analytics and insights. Like I said, they track everything. Who's coming, who's looking, who's buying, who's not buying, who comes back. You can use those analytics and insights. 
Okay? And last, they help you reduce costs. Okay? I don't know if everybody agrees to this, but it does happen in most businesses. Because they, first of all, get you volume. Because if you're selling more, you should be able to reduce costs. Second, because their processes allow them to negotiate costs. So when you ship something through a marketplace versus if you ship it yourself, their cost is lower. Because they're shipping volume, bulk. Right? So they have negotiated rates. The most important thing what they do is equation of customer. Hmm. We have to pay big rupees, big money for that. Correct. That's the big cost for yes. Yes. When you are saying global rich, and we are saying that we are not only really allowing that customer to sell in India, but across the globe, but then how about the shipping part and transportation part? Won't it add to the cost, or will they keep it the same cost, or what would be the cost? So costs go up. The transportation costs obviously go up. So th the way the marketplaces work is they uh, configure domestic costs, they configure international costs. So depending on where the buyer is coming from, a different shipping cost is short to them. Right? I recently bought something on Amazon India that was shipped from the US. Okay? Um, I don't know why. The seller is selling in India. He, ships, he sits in the US. and he say, So the, the shipping cost was slightly higher. Not too high. It was slightly higher. So instead of 50 rupees, I think it was 90 rupees or something. But it was slightly higher than if I had bought domestically. Yeah. Okay. So like, like I said, um, across the globe, all leading online sites are marketplaces. Okay? Mercado Libre out of South America is one of the largest e com players out of South America. Again, marketplace. Look at Amazon. Forget India. Amazon in UK, Amazon in other countries is the leading website. Okay? If you look at China, T Mall and Alibaba lead. Okay? Again, marketplaces. Japan and other countries, Rakuten leads, right? India, obviously, Flipkart leads, right? Think of a Philippines, smaller, smaller, smaller economy. The leader is Lazada, which is another marketplace. I just use these examples, okay? But if you go across the globe, the leading online sites are marketplaces, okay? Yeah. Talk about this product selling and buying. What about the service uh, service marketplace like consultation and like service platform like Fiverr? What's the mm. future of, of those marketplaces in India? Like consulting doctor, like doctor on demand of US. So like what Practo, all of these guys are starting. It's, it's a marketplace. That's why I said my definition of marketplace is much broader than what you're thinking. Okay, Practo is a marketplace. Okay, because what they're doing is on one side. They're bringing doctors in. On the other side, they're bringing patients in. It's a marketplace. Okay? That's why I said it doesn't, the transaction doesn't have to happen for it to be called a marketplace. Services, um, obviously, medicine is already starting, like I, like I just mentioned, right? But other services are also starting. So, home services, um, you're starting to see more and more, right? Where aggregation is happening for your AC guys, your pest guys, your plumbers, your electricians. Simba is there, there's Urban Clap, there's House Joy, there's Time Savers. So all services are ultimately uh, coming in this marketplace model. Because that gives you more democratic pricing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah.